As of January 7th, since 8.34 a.m. Central European Standard Time, my our daughter, Mina, was born and I'm a really proud father. We are proud parents, really happy. And yeah, my next special guest is Brian Herrick. We're going to talk about a lot of things, deep dive down the rabbit hole about trust, about freedom, about evolution, about uh, deflation economies, about, you know, the power of Bitcoin. So give him a follow. Check out his website, which I'm going to put in the show notes and make sure you follow me. You subscribe to the YouTube channel and my podcast platforms. If you love this episode, please give it a five star review on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. I can't wait. Looking really forward to this talk, which I've been planning for a long time now. And without further ado, this is my talk with Brian Harrington and enjoy listening. Welcome to the show, Brian Harrington, my special guest. How are you doing, man? Really? Hey, I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Me too. I love it. Thanks for doing all you do on YouTube and just just being here. Like I, I watch YouTube every day. And so I'm thankful for people that take the time to just sit down and talk because it, it matters. And there's people on the other side of the screen that that want information about Bitcoin and and want to talk about just freedom and all of it. And so I'm thankful to I'm thankful every time I get a chance to do it. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, um, I don't want to, you know, talk about the Bitcoin's price. I mean, it's like exponentially going upwards, upwards. It's like right now, you know, I'm going to give my listeners my the, the euro price because I'm based in European Union and Austria. So the euro price as of now, as of January 8th, 2021. Oh, and by the way, I'm a proud father since yesterday. <laughs> I, should, I should have mentioned that. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So Mina, our daughter, was born on January 7th at 8.34 a.m. Central European time in Austria. And yeah, she's beautiful, healthy. Yeah. So yeah, the Bitcoin's price is at right now 33,800 euro. What's, I think that's about, what is that? Is it like more than $40,000? I think so. it's right at four. Yeah, right at 40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people seem to have, and I always told so many people, it's like people have like a hard time not only understanding, which is, you know, new, it was even new to me, like the, the essence of absolute scarcity. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, Bitcoin's got the magic sauce and the difficulty adjustment, the halvings, all those things are magic sauces additionally, but like understanding the, the logarithmic function or exponentials, you know, I think Jeff Booth always said, yeah. you know, it's like people have a hard time. I mean, you know, it's natural. It's like, we, we can't like uh, fathom, imagine what it could be like, like on an exponential curve. So before we oh. go that. Exactly. Brian, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Because I, I checked out your website. It's really fast. I didn't know you were even in the film production because I, you know, uh, just, just as a, sh a short side note, I tried to like bring everybody together. I, you know, created a Telegram group and brought like in 30 prominent Bitcoiners together and wrote an article and, you know, about my vision, like how we can, you know, bring in all those creative, brilliant people together within the Bitcoin space, let's just say, you know, mm -hmm. and like produce something that really touches not only on intellectual level, comprehension level, but really touches the people in the hearts and the souls. Like what, what, what is really possible with Bitcoin, but I haven't somehow achieved it, but you know, I just want to have maybe your thoughts on that. How do you imagine like uh, converting yeah. all this knowledge into a, you know, whatever yeah. a trailer or a movie or whatever. So stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So two things off off that and what you were talking about scarcity. Yeah, so my name is Brian Harrington. Um, I live in Anaheim, California. I help run the Orange County Bitcoin Network, which is a little meetup that we have here that's kind of turned into a decent decent sized meetup. We've got we've got like 20, 30 people that come out every week and we meet in bars and restaurants that are open and we talk about freedom and we talk about Bitcoin and we've, we're expanding. We, we have people talking in San Diego about it and then the Inland Empire about it as in Las Vegas. Um, Two days ago, yesterday, um, meeting with a group out there that's talking in the same way that we are. And um, Stephen Cole lives out in Phoenix now, and he's uh, leading the one out there. And so anyone listening to the United States, we can get you plugged into what we're doing. And anyone listening from the United States in general, I know a lot of the meetup leaders across here, so I can get you plugged in. Um, my website, yeah, like, so I've done a lot of things. Look, I've, I've been a campaign manager for political campaigns. I've been a film producer on it films. And... Now I've been kind of just doing Bitcoin grassroots organizing full time for the past like two years. And what in that transition really happened when I kind of got stalled out on my political career a little bit and Bitcoin really just filled the void. Like it's, it's the same just kind of grassroots power to the people. Like I, I believe we're changing the world here. I, I believe this is really important. And, and here's and 
the reason why I tie it into what you just said about scarcity, people are going to need less Bitcoin than they think. Like, I don't, I don't actually, I don't super like tweeting like, oh, I don't have enough Bitcoin. Like, oh my God, the sats per dollar is going down or whatever. I don't have enough. Like I haven't, I have enough. Like, I, I actually, and I believe our best, our best stacking days are ahead of us. Like the world needs Bitcoin. The world needs it. The establishment has no solutions and no answers. It's crumbling. The, Uni the United States Postal Service does not work. The Department of Motor Vehicles does not work. All the unemployment offices do not work. The bureaucrats have nothing. They have no solutions. They can't ship code. And there's, there's no solutions. And think about all the banks out there that still don't have Bitcoin support. They don't realize that th their infrastructure is not working. They're all weighted heavily at the top. And so they, the world needs Bitcoiners and everyone is going to need less Bitcoin than they think because Bitcoin is going to become the global money. And, and you, and with all that, that's, I'm not even, I'm coming at that from an optimistic perspective. I'm not coming at that from like a doomsday perspective. I'm saying it's completely possible for you, wherever you live right now, to start to live your life, moving into Bitcoin, start to move your personal life onto the Bitcoin standard. All the tools are available. That's, that's truly what 2020 showed me. But like, look, at the beginning of 2020, I was, I was a regular American cash apper Bitcoiner. Like there was nothing special about me. I didn't know anything about Samurai Wallet or BTC Pay Server or any of this stuff. But 2020, the way that businesses were treated and the way that individuals were treated by every single government in the whole world was not good. And I don't appreciate that. And Bitcoin fixes this. And so you, everyone listening to this right now is able to start to move into Bitcoin, holding it as their unit of account and their savings account, and also using it as a medium exchange. Those two things are not, not exclusive to each other. You can do both those things. And whatever logistical questions that pop up in your head when you start to think about that can be completely overcome because all the tools are available. And so that's what I think about this, the, the scarcity side of it and the reason why the grassroots organizing to me is so exciting because words, our words are powerful. Our words are powerful. And I enjoy listening to people on pushing the envelope and talking about how can I actually change, change my life. I watched, uh, yeah, it's great what you think. Uh, you know, I watched uh, this short video on your website. I think it's like eight or 10 minutes. And uh, I mean, I can notice, you know, you're a marketing specialist because you're, you know, marketing is all about communication, like how to communicate. And you were like, you know, in a very calm voice and, you know, with, with a couple of seconds of interruption between the sentences. But what I really loved about, about your approach is that you, you reiterated like the source you know, what, what's the source problem? What's, what is the root cause, you know, and, and always going back to where does it all start? These are all symptoms, you know, and, and uh, the consequences, you know, it's all good. We, we understand that, but what is the source, you know? So this is what I really loved about your approach and how you communicate, how we, you, you know, try to communicate this to the people. And I think, yeah, people, uh, you know, I think individuals need the individual perspectives or angles, how you, you know, uh, uh, how you wake them up sort of. Yeah. Totally. Um, one more thing on the film side and that um, we just recently shot a video for a BTC pay server. And so if people go to the BTC pay server, YouTube, they can find out a little bit about our meetup. They can kind of see I like the film production side of it a little bit. And, um, and it talks about the circular economy. It talks about what I'm talking about here of just the, the tools are available for you to start, you know, learning about the commerce side um, of Bitcoin and, and like just seeing everyone together, I think tells that story that you're talking about of wanting, wanting to tell the story through, through film. So what do you think about since, you know, this is like super like going viral with Jack Mahler's, um, you know, groundbreaking, uh, tech, you know, technology, yeah. Or, 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 or open source technology and, and facilitating and enabling, zero at zero cost globally 24 7 365 days uh, uh settlement layer uh yep. which can be done instantaneously i think people haven't really un comprehended the real <laughs> implications like the evolutionary implications of this like no i i love it i'm huge Jack Mahler's fan. Like I was super blessed to be able to meet him and I love the strike app and what he just released even yesterday. 
I'm like two Jack Maher's podcasts behind at the time of this recording. And so it, I, I don't even have my head wrapped around everything that, that he just did. And, but what it speaks to is that it's not even like, he's just an individual, just like me and you are individuals. And the fact that one individual can push it forward that much it also speaks to how powerful Bitcoin is and how powerful the Bitcoin Lightning Network is. And so, and so I'm sorry, if a young kid in his 20s can use the Lightning Network to completely disintermediate these like entrenched, entrenched, like, ter- like I have to be honest, I have zero idea of how to send you money on the, in the legacy world. I legitimately have zero idea. I've never done that. I don't know what website to go to. I don't know how to do it, but I do know how to do it with Bitcoin. And so in that sense, I, I just like ticked forward past four steps of all this other supposed innovation. And so all the other financial innovation or what these like fintech things are doing or whatever is all tinkering at the edges because Bitcoin is blasting in a huge giant holes like through it. And so that I, I, the world is going to change very, very fast. I'm, I'm like fully on board with that train and that mentality now. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not, I tweeted earlier today, like, the time for like armchair quarterbacking and just academic discussions is over. Like there, there's not, I, I'm not here to like talk with you, Kayvon, about like the theory of Bitcoin and like the, hmm, like what would a world look like if I could send you money, you know, with, and then we're just like pontificating. None of this is hypothetical. This is live code running around the internet, period. And it's happening right now. And so anybody like, so anybody listening, all of your downtime should be focused on how can I increase like financial problems in my life using Bitcoin? And, and, and that might not even be, you know, some people, a lot of people need the savings side, you know, like they don't have any savings and they're, they're dependent on, you know, debt. Okay, well then start stacking just a little bit so that you can work on the savings problem. All right, say you're flush with money and like money is not a problem to you. Okay, sweet. Well, then you can still eke out if you're a business owner, credit cards are stealing 3% from you off the top every single time. You can send that to zero with the Bitcoin Lightning Network. That's a story, period. That's a huge asymmetrical thing that very few people in the world understand right now that you no longer have to pay 3% to Visa. You don't have to. You literally do not have to. And if you spend half a Saturday afternoon on the internet, you will no longer be paying 3% Visa for the, for the rest of your life. Think about how, think about the return on investment of those six hours learning about the Lightning Network. Huge, huge. And that's all, and, and that's all happening right now. That's not a hypothetical. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, this is coming out in six months. You know, look for, look out for the email update. No, <laughs> it's, it's right now. Yeah, and you know, the nation states, whatever regulators, all these agencies and, you know, bureaucracy, they can try all they want, but I think the game is over, right? I mean, there's already like so many also, you know, great ethical politicians or whatever you want to call them, senators like, uh, you know, what's her name, Cynthia Lummis or or Loomis of of, of Wyoming, and so many Congress women and men, I mean, already totally into Bitcoin and they carry like the torch of of Bitcoin around. Uh, I think the game is already over. I'm just thinking sometimes I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm like most, one of the most optimistic people I think on this planet, but sometimes I'm trying to like to ground myself like, okay, just a reality check. What could be the worst case scenario? You know, I'm not into negativity. I'm just like, you know, with all with the realities going on the nation state, military, industrial intelligence, corporate complex, like what could they really do if they wanted to, if they, because they already feel threatened. I mean, I would, if I was in their shoes, I would feel utterly threatened. You know, I would, I would, I would, you know, massively employ some kind of false flag oh. military. I'm just, you know, I'm just yes. thinking out loud. Yeah. What do you think about so, it? Yeah, so totally. I do think it's important to stay grounded. And I completely agree that it's good to continue asking those questions and continuing to, yeah, just ask the questions. What I think, what I think is the weakest link right now is Bitcoiners self-censoring themselves and not pushing and and i'm not and i'm and that's the whole thing i i'm not advocating for people 
like on a scale of whatever scale or measurement you want to do from, cause we're all on different political scales of how much we're willing to push the envelope and how much risk we're like willing to put on ourselves. And just like the beating chest, like, don't be like me. You don't, no one has to be like me. No one has to be like Kayvon. No one has to like go fall. Like, I'm not asking you to go follow the most hardcore, you know, anarchist capitalists on Twitter and on the internet that you can find. Don't just take wherever you are right now and move one degree towards freedom. Because the Bitcoin technology can do it. That, that's what I want to explain is that like, there's two things. The bureaucracy is so behind. So yes, respect how entrenched they are. Yes, they are entrenched. However, they are also very, very, very behind. And that's why I want, and that's why I bring up the examples that I do. We all know this. This isn't, it's like now a running joke. The Department of Motor Vehicles does not work. The Department of Unemployment does not work. There, there are people there the agencies do not control every single aspect of anything they make a few examples of some people and we all know that and so the the biggest risk right now is bitcoiners that have any sort of fire for freedom in that at all are not just just do this just turn it just one degree just two degrees just turn up your freedom notch one degree two degrees that's, I think, the main way that we just continue to gain ground and continue to stay ahead of what the bureaucracy is doing. And an example of this, an, an example of this is Uber. Uber just launched, dude. They didn't send an email to the taxi union and say, hey, is it okay if we do this? They didn't send anything to anybody. There's, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this is now on everybody's cell phone. Okay, and now what's happening? Now they're playing catch up of saying like, oh, well, now you have to get this like other card to go to the airport. Or, like, do Look, that's what Bitcoin's like. Another example in the United States, cannabis. Cannabis has had this, just this, just seep into the cracks, seep into the cracks, seep into the cracks. It's everywhere. It's everywhere and you can get it however you want. You want to get it on the white market, get it on the white market. You want to get it on the gray market, get it on the gray market. You want to get it on the black market, get it on the black market. Whichever flavor that you want, but it seeps into all of it. And that's how bit like Bitcoin is both those examples on steroids. And then another example is like the 3d printed gun movement. I don't know a lot like intellectually or like in the detail levels of that movement, but what I love about it is they, they have this thing where they say facts on the ground, like a fact on the ground, a very, a fact that everyone has to deal with now is that these files are on the internet. And so again, like do whatever you want to do from there. But the files are on the internet and all these parts are commercially available. And so now it's up to you, the individual, you can choose, do you want to take all those pieces and put them together or not? And that's the same in Bitcoin. What I try to get people to understand is Bitcoin is at that stage right now that you can, all the information's on the internet, whatever, when you look inside yourself and you turn up the freedom notch two degrees and it opens up kind of this next level, then on your Saturday afternoons, start to put the new pieces together. And in that sense, it's like, it, it, it's like a, it's like a hobby that pays you. And it's a hobby that makes the world better rather than, cause, cause we're all addicted. This we're all addicted to like escaping. We're all addicted to drinking and drugs and sex and video games and just all this stuff. But all of that is great. And like enjoying your life is great, but find enjoyment in turn the freedom dodge up just two degrees and realizing that you can exponentially improve your life by putting together the Bitcoin pieces inside your own life. Um, and that feedback, that feedback then that you pass along to the developers, because it's going to be tricky. Look, running a lightning node is tricky. Bouncing your own channels is tricky. It's not, it's not going to feel like clicking on the mainstream apps from your app store and having to do that. However, get as far as you can and then send in the feedback because they need that. They need that direction. And in that sense, now you're a part of open source development. Wow, there's so many points here you brought up. Um, let me- So I don't have- I, um, Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so you- Oh, I don't have, I guess, I guess I don't have a, I don't have a, I didn't have exact answer to your government question. The, my answer is, I feel like they're behind. Yes, they can do things but that doesn't stop you from looking at the pieces in your own life. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I mean, you know, I mean, there's so many exit strategies and it's going to come like whatever it's called, jurisdictional arbitrage or, you know, exiting from one state. And a lot of people will, will, will be able to do that. But, you know, a lot of other people won't have the maybe, you know, the, the possibilities are not yet at least. But there will be a lot of Bitcoiners, I think, who will just, you know, they're not going to play this you know, fucked up game, you know, of, uh, because we are really uh, on the precipice of something where I tell people like, I mean, wh what do we want? You know, have we learned anything from history? I mean, when the World Economic Forum comes up with, okay, I'm back again. Got you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, the World Economic Forum is, you know, comes up with videos and then they withdraw with videos about like you own nothing and be happy. And, you know, the whole lockdown, the whole, this whole artificially created, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, crisis. I mean, it just, it's a virus. And even, you know, Jack Mullers even said in one, in some of his interviews, he said he had the coronavirus and uh, he had some, you know, uh, some, some uh, deficiencies in taste and, and smell. And then he came, came all back again. And of course we are, you know, concerned about older people. We don't want, you know, older people or will be family members or anybody, you know, get that virus. It just people, what I'm trying to say, people don't even question <laughs> anything anymore. You know, they're so yeah. obedient to authority. Right. It's, it's really sickening. So to come back to my point is, um, how do we like how can we educate people more like um you know when people a lot of bitcoin say you come for the money or you know for becoming rich mm -hmm. or whatever but then you stay for whatever for the revolution for the evolution for a much much bigger picture and i think people are are finally you know finding their own angles and 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 for me it's like you know also like the bigger picture like how wh what kind of world can we create you know when you listen like for people like jeff booth yeah about deflationary, you know, economies, abundance, you know, what Bitcoin can really create, what kind of abundance with lower and lower prices. I think if we can like visualize that's, you know, tying it back to this idea of, uh, you know, create, making a movie, producing a movie, like how can we create without going into utopian or whatever, you know, sci-fi thing, like how can we explain to people this is about quality of life that we can create. You know, people will have to work yeah. much, yeah. not less. They will pay less and less and less yep. because it's a deflationary uh, monetary yep. system. So how would you do that? How would you approach that? I think, yeah, I think you get Bitcoin in their hand. And it sounds, and I'm only even just now being able to just articulate the whole thing. But a lot of, what you hear from people, like number, number go up is not bad. And telling people about number go up is also not bad because number go up distills everything that you just said and distills everything that Jeff Booth like so articulately does. And so when you get Bitcoin into someone's hand and they watch number go up, the questions ask themselves. And then, and what's so crazy is Bitcoin is incorruptible. It can't, that's why Ad, Bitcoin advocates go so hard and are such hard advocates because they've never been let down by it yet. When I used to work for political candidates, when I used to work for on these congressional campaigns and do these things, there's always that 3%, 5%, 10%, 25% 10 of the time that they don't do things the way that I would do them. But the job is you go there and you still make the advocacy. Bitcoin has never let me down, period. Like the only two things in my life that have never let me down are the God that I serve and Bitcoin. And that's weird. To me, that's very, very, very weird. And I still wrestle with it every single day. And so the way, like what the reason why that's an answer to your question is because when you get Bitcoin in someone's hand, you can't strip the philosophy out of it. it, it the philosophy cannot be stripped out of it. I don't care. I don't care if you hold the, the worst, like, derivative of a derivative of a derivative on a custodial exchange bitcoin you you still cannot pull the philosophy out of that and as you ask yourself more questions like this is the rabbit hole that we've all you know deemed the rabbit hole as you ask yourself those questions you will get closer and closer to owning custodial bitcoin and then working for bitcoin and then and then realizing that every single cost benefit analysis of your whole life is to this new money, this new standard. And then yes, you reach that place of peace of realizing I'm, 
I have back in control of where my life is going. The World Economic Forum has not, like, I, they have no idea what my goals are for my life or my goals for my family or again, the like God that I serve or like any of that, dude. They have, they have no idea about any of that. And so when you have people that are still watching their videos and still voting for politicians and still looking for things to whatever, you can't, <laughs> here's a crazy example. I don't know if people are gonna, I don't know if people are gonna get this. So I've, look, I, I follow Jesus, like I'm a Christian. And when he said in the Bible, the first thing he said to the disciples were, was follow me. And then later, later at the end of the book, he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. If he had walked up to that fisherman on the shore that day and said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, he would have, that's crazy and weird. That's not the first thing you said. And that, that, that's what Bitcoin's like. Get Bitcoin into your hands. You'll realize that it's better truth. It's better, respects your time, respects your values, respects you as a person, as a human, more than the fiat government money does, than the World Economic Forum does. And you can't straight out of there. It's impossible. It's impossible to strip it out. And, and that and that like still blows my mind, but I think a lot about, 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 and then it goes back to your question of still trying to stay grounded, grounded. Is there a way for the World Economic Forum to still pull off you will own nothing. Yeah, sorry about that. My bandwidth is pretty low at the moment. So uh, you're good. Forgive me. Um, you know what? Um, I want to ask you something because um, I mean, I'm not I'm not religious, but I I, I, I would consider myself as truly spiritual, you know, yeah. um, in the essence of creation, you know, in the essence of soul. Uh, and there is a truly deep spiritual um, um, rabbit hole to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, um, when we, you know, talk about the philosophy, the fundamental monetary properties, technological properties about do not trust, but verify. And it's, you know, it's a lot of it, our societies also, you know, I think they have a lack, a huge lack of trust within themselves. So I think even though, yes, the money, the source of money, it's got to be trustless or trust minimized, at least. I think this process uh, and I want to, you know, hear your thoughts about that. It's like helping us as an individual, as a soul, to to trust ourselves in within, you know, the power of love or whatever uh, unconditional love of generosity of creativity. What is your take on that? Fully agree. Like fully agree. And I think the reason why some look we've been lied to so many times off so many times we heard uh we've signed up for the too good to be true uh business classes too many times every single time and we were ripped off every single time we voted for the politicians that backstabbed us so many times and so 100 percent. oh sweet dude i heard from Kayvon and brian on youtube that you know bitcoin is the new thing dude it's the truth like it'll yeah that if you this could easily bounce off you because you've been lied to so many times and even and then here's even this Look, me like bringing up Christianity and you like talking about spirituality, that immediately could make people turn this off or it could make people bounce off because of whatever. And I would say the reason why, but, but here's another don't trust verify example. If you have had a bad time with spirituality, it's because you were trusting the wrong intermediary. It's because you weren't, you, you trusted them and they let you down because humans, humans let you down always and institutions built by humans will let you down period and that's why that's so but then the small caveat on that because bit because humans do build the bitcoin network but that's what's so like radical and redemptive of it is that flawed humans flawed humans can contribute to this open source project that perfectly incentivizes flawed greedy humans to all work together like bitcoin is money for enemies there are people in this world that do that do that see the that see the world the opposite of i do and they can own bitcoin and we'll be on the same page we'll be incentivized to be on the same page and and that is like truly and radically like amazing and any time that you've been burnt by a consultant, anytime you've been burnt by a politician, anytime you've been burnt by a pastor, 
all of none of that has to do with anything underlying but but you're allowing it to like you're thinking that it has to do with it being the underlying and that you're right you can't when you study bitcoin and you realize how incorruptible it is it it does become spiritual and philosophical because you realize how much of the world is not built on first principles you also that's the other term you hear a exactly. lot is like first principles first yeah principles. and brian you know i truly not only believe but i really know i trust that because we never had i mean it, you know bitcoin is su such a evolutionary thing it's never been done like with uh, money that with absolute scarcity Give me a break, you know? It's like, totally. you know, uh, people talk about gold. These yep. People don't understand the, sc the scarcity aspect. It's like gold, yeah, has an unknown and relative scarcity. And, you know, it just depends on the time, resources, technological innovation, and, you know, where to mine them, or asteroids or, you know, on the, uh, under the sea or whatever. But uh, um, mm -hmm. I think it will, what I'm trying to say is that it will create, I, I, tr I truly, you know, believe and trust in, 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 in this knowledge that, uh, in this vision, that it will create a totally evolutionary civilization because we never had those structures in order, you know, to, 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 to thrive on, you know, prosperity, abundance and peace, you know, and technological innovation uh, by order of magnitude. Hit me with part of that one time. It dropped out of my headphones. Oh, sure. You know, I think Bitcoin, once, once we go into, we don't even, I think, need to go into this... Uh, hyper bitcoinization from that point on i think even before that i think i think there will a, a new civilization will emerge as you know as we talked about you know abundance and 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 and, and prosperity yes. technological zero to one technological innovation it will facilitate yes. so many other things i mean we haven't had and this is what i'm trying you know always to reiterate i mean we have yeah we've had uh, you know amazing technological innovation in the digital realm you know like whatever computer science or uh, ai or machine learning or uh, smartphones but like we never asked ourselves why didn't we ever have like technological innovation you know in all these other sectors would it be energy production or transportation or environmental cleansing or health or longe you know, longevity or uh, you know uh, totally. um, you know whatever that is so you know i'm just saying yeah. It will it will create a, we will finally have the 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 structures you know the architecture yes. in order to thrive yes. as a totally new civilization as whatever other civilizations have already done before us. <laughs> totally, yeah, exactly. So my thing on that, my thing on that is um, exactly. It's a renaissance. Like it makes it making great again. It's searching for the truth. Um, because, you know, it ties him back to this movie production, this film production I have in my mind. And I think, you know, I'm not the creative, you know, you know but I'm, I'm just I'm very visionary. And I'm thinking we already have the tools available. Oh, we have the intellectual, we have the Yes, okay, yes, good. dude, yes. yes. The the circular economy is at hand. Yes, that's that's what it is. I was like, this. the circular economy is at hand. The future is at hand. It's not... No one is going to walk up to all the Bitcoiners and just tap them on the shoulder and be like, all right, today's the day, today's the day. No, like it, it's, ha it's happening. It's at hand. There's no, and th this is what, and we all, we all bought, this is why I said what I said about the, it's not time for armchair quarterbacking. I'm not, I did not, I did not show up on uh, like to cave on, on YouTube today to talk about full, the like, theory and hypothetical. I'm not talking about hypotheticals. I'm telling you directly from my life and the lives of others that I've seen adopting a personal Bitcoin standard and using it as their unit of account and their savings and their vehicle and this thing, it starts to change their life right now. Like I'm, I'm, that's what I'm explaining. And that's what, and that, and when you get on Bitcoin Twitter and you read these things and you watch all the other videos, that's what, and you, from all over the world, you're like, like watching, like we're, we're clicking through left. are the, the Use whatever spiritual analogies you want. Like the combined conscious is firing, clicking, 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 clicking through levels. And you can look at it from both sides because of what you said. Zero to one. I love that you brought up zero to one because people should read that book by Peter Thiel, zero to one. You should watch Peter Thiel on YouTube. Um, the most recent one he did where he talks about everything is in stagnation. 
And then you listed all the examples like, tr dude, transportation should be way more advanced than it is right exactly. now. Medical practice should be way exactly. more advanced than it is right now. Yes. Infrastructure should be way more advanced. Computers should be way more advanced than it is right now. And what's, and so what's causing this? If you talk to Bitcoiners, it's fiat money and fiat standard because there's too many middlemen inside all this stuff and there's too much bureaucracy. So again, when I go off about bureaucracy and top-down control and communism or whatever, then what happens? A certain group of people tune it out because that's, I'm using political language, but we need new language. Like new wine deserves new wineskins. The whole world, this is an upgrade. This is a mental upgrade in what, in you can load the upgrade, like load the upgrade to your personal OS, load the upgrade because all of society is taking a step forward right now across all genres. And that's the thing of, of like, that's why even asking the simple question, what is Bitcoin gets you a radically different answer for radically every person that you ask, what is Bitcoin? Because everyone sees like such a different aspect of it. And because it's such a radical shift for people. And so, but, so what I would say is like, don't, don't let that scare you, like let that empower you. And again, just look to make a one degree improvement in your life, one degree improvement, one degree improvement, because you can see the dominoes falling of Bitcoin detractors are wrong, period. And there's lots of ways to self-verify that for yourself. There's, yeah. it's very, and it's getting to the point where if you're a Bitcoin detractor, you, you need to really check your assumptions and you need to really check your first principles and you need to really check who your allegiance is to. Because if your allegiance is to the status quo and if your allegiance is to the middleman class and if you're like, if you're allegiant to that, then obviously you're a detractor. But don't come here like claiming to like be helpful and try to talk about all this stuff that we've already clicked through. If you come with honest questions, Bitcoiners are the most open people in the whole world and they will give you the keys. Yeah. We're going to give you the keys to the kingdom exactly. right now. And you know, Robert, the are fully available. Yeah, so Robert Breedlove does a great yeah. job. And I think, yeah, before, you know, what is Bitcoin? Good question. Fundamental question, what is Bitcoin? But like, what is money? And then Robert Breedlove really does a fantastic job, you know, just, just, just breaking it down, like step by step, even, you know, he's serious with Michael Saylor. But even before that, he started like writing amazing articles on you know like the root cause or what you also mentioned in your video like like what is the root cause you know but like it's it's a it's a theft it's it's literally a theft you know I and mean, we've got people just don't yeah. understand that we have central banks or bank financial settlements all these unelected self-appointed entities that have zero uh, accountability uh uh, they have total criminal immunity. They are totally untouchable. And I wrote, you know, long articles and, uh, you know, with references to all kinds of literature, you know, from, from what is it called? Tragedy and Hope and, uh, and, and, and uh, the creature of Jekyll Island. But, you know, I think if, if people just understand what, what are we dealing with? This is, this is not some kind of, you know, conspiracy theory. This is reality, you know? Totally. And what's great, what I love about Bitcoin is that, well, number one, if you identify all that stuff and you hear what Kayvon's saying about all that stuff and you're just any sort of, free, again, libertarian, freedom, any of this stuff, then you should get it and you should realize that Bitcoin is the truth and you should realize that every other way that you're tinkering at the edges that you should get involved with Bitcoin, period. But then if you're listening to that, you, you know, you haven't really identified that bureaucracy in the middle class, you know, is corrupt. If you, if you don't see the corruption yet, that's fine then just buy Bitcoin for number go up because, because number go up still matters and number go up will still prove to you that all this other stuff that we're saying. So don't allow it to be this barrier of like, oh, like Bitcoin's not really for me. You know, I don't, I like whatever. I think I, because there is a progressive case for Bitcoin. There's a complete, there's, there's, I don't care what language you speak. I don't care what political language you speak. I don't care what literal physical language you speak. You can relay this. You can completely relay this. And we should, yeah. So, um, like, and here's a random example. Here's a random example. All right, you're gonna hear this all this stuff. Oh, well, Bitcoin mining is bad for the environment. Okay, wrong. Let's examine this. No, Bitcoin is incentivizing renewable energy at a better rate than the regular grid does. Because the, the problem with renewable energy right now is that all the solar panels and all the wind farms or wherever, they can't truck the energy to the cities and to the places that need it at an efficient rate. 
And so, but now if you wind farm, an underproducing wind farm that only is using 20% of its capacity for whatever like mathematical, you know, thing of the city doesn't need it right now. Or again, bureaucracy laws only allow so much energy to come from this over here. You can mine Bitcoin at the source. You've never been able to monetize any sort of stranded energy, renewable energy anywhere in the world right now. You can up your bottom line by plugging in Bitcoin miners. And so another example that you hear a lot of people talking about is like natural gas flaring. You can Google all of that stuff. There's tons of channels out there about natural gas flaring. And so that's an example of just because potentially the majority of, you know, people talking about Bitcoin right now are only using one type of language. Dude, Bitcoin transcends that. Bitcoin transcends, transcends all sorts of different political language. And so um, that... That is something that gives me a lot more confidence too, because the problem, the problem with other political movements and the problem with other like dis dissent type paths is that they require this like group of people all being on the same page. And for Bitcoin to succeed, Bitcoin has already succeeded and is succeeding personally in everybody's lives. And no one has to be on the same page. No one has to be on the same page because the, the network itself is on the same page and you can't strip that out of there. It's this open source thing. So you can plug into it and get whatever you need um, out of it. And I love that, I love that for, what does it take? It literally takes a dollar and a cell phone to get involved, less than that. It takes whatever current unit, a Euro, it takes whatever current unit you have to get involved. And what I love is that Bitcoin can work from my little brother that delivers pizzas and it can work for Michael Saylor. That's amazing. The fact that it can, what name another, name another financial, not even financial, name another idea in the world that is purely fair between a billionaire and a minimum wage worker. I, I have no other answers. And again, I'm completely, I send them to me. If you have them, send them to me. But there's no other answer for something that keeps billionaires and minimum wage workers on the same page. Exactly. And you know, people have such a difficult uh, time to understand or imagine what kind of world we could live in. Because even the people who, who lived in the gold standard, they're gone. I mean, it was like one was, you know, the gold standard was like literally what, I mean, this abundance, like just before I think the first world war. But I mean, I know, you know, it was the Nixon shock actually that totally decoupled it. And then from there we got, uh, I mean, just recently, I think we are celebrating not only 12 year of Bitcoin, <laughs> but also 50 year of, of slave money, of fiat uh, money currency. Yep. So um, I think people, yep. we've been so brainwashed with deflation is bad, deflation is bad, <laughs> that people don't have, yeah. you know, the, the, not even, you know, the, the slightest comprehension about what it, what it would mean for their daily life, for their future, for their children, grandchildren, for their, you know, for their happiness. You know, don't you want yeah, to be yeah. happy? Like, don't you want yeah, to yeah. work less? Yes, they're going to be robots. This is the question I'm asking. It's like, who is going to be in charge of all this? I mean, even if we're going into decentralized, you know, structures or centralized structures. And, you know, when I see like, you know, robotics, the first prototypes, you know, and you just want to play off as a cute robotics by, what is it called? This, this corporation, uh, whatever, you know, uh, and they're not just dancing and defending themselves. I'm like, Ooh, man. I mean, if these are like a first proto prototypes, I'd rather, you know, it's not, I have no problems with ro robots, robotics, machine learning, right. artificial intelligence, but in whose hand is it going to be? Who's going to control it? Who's going to program it? And they can serve us. They can definitely serve older people, younger people, you know, they can serve humanity, society on every level we can think of, but I don't know, maybe I'm just too far away already into the future sometimes with my, you know, um, just thinking what are the consequences? This is why I think we're such on a, such a beautiful precipice. It's now, now or never. This is a one-time <laughs> chance we have, like, choose, make a wise, you know, uh, you know, uh, choice uh, for yourself, for your posterity, for your children. Totally. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is an op technology and I think gold is a pessimistic technology and I think then all that stuff about robotics and like yeah you can there's lots of things to be pessimistic about if you want to look at things in a pessimistic light like it's easy it's way easier to find things from a pessimistic light than an optimistic light and it's even harder and then so when you're in the optimistic home it's then even way harder to find the grounded optimism 
grounded optimism is in is is in short supply, super short supply. In and however, I like I don't believe like I don't believe I could physically mentally spend ten hours a day on Bitcoin Twitter if it wasn't in grounded optimism. Because I don't think I just looking back on my life and all the different again I've like worked on political campaigns I've worked on these movies I've done marketing for d- different businesses and all this stuff and like dude I've I worked for I've had so many bosses in my whole life and worked for so many people in my whole life and worked on so many projects I I don't think I would stick around with so much time if it wasn't feeding me something that was positive for me I I just don't I don't believe that I don't believe that and so in that sense it's not. I think Bitcoiners are the most grounded, optimistic people in the entire world. And, and the fact, look, the fact that I can just meet you over video day instantly from widely different areas of the world and widely different backgrounds and be like as such on the same page as we are is, all, is again, a super testament to Bitcoin. Because again, name another, I, I talk about that a lot at like our Bitcoin meetups. Like, dude, I meet, I, in 2020, I probably met, literally like probably 40 people face to face that I met for the first time over Twitter. And I drank a beer with like 40 people from Twitter for the first time over the internet. And none of it was an awkward encounter. None of them. The, some of these people didn't even have profile pictures and no bot. I just completely winged it. And we were on the same page. And name another, name another niche, name another hobby, name another activity thing, stock, I don't, politician, name another thing in the whole world that that would happen to. And uh, so I think something is happening here. I think something completely, really, really, really big is happening here. And that's why I answer the way I do just about like the, from the, again, from the op, that's why I'm optimistic about it. That's why I'm optimistic about it because I've never seen that happen before. And I have never, and then you flip back to the pessimistic side and you're like, dude, the bureaucrats, it just is so bad. Just so, so, so there's no light and no solution at all. <laughs> it's at all. <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, the sad thing is if you think about it, when you look at the mainstream and whatever it's going on, or even on the internet, it's like, we only know a fraction of what's going on. You know, we don't really know what's going on in the background. So it's always probably worse than we can even imagine, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, this is the beauty, I think of Bitcoin, which just creates and it makes the old system just obsolete. It's, it's, I mean, I even had a dream, uh, at, at, you know, right on that day when my father died, like uh, a couple of years ago, and it, it was a weird dream. I, I dreamt that the Bank of International Settlements just evaporated and it was just peaceful. You know, it was just, we just transitioned. I think that's the key. What is the transition? What choice do we have than this peaceful yeah. transition? There, it's not going to be frictionless, but it's going to be the most beautiful, most, fric- you know, most frictionless, uh, most peaceful transition. I agree. I agree with that. Oh, and I, this made me think of this. I'm having a baby boy uh, coming up this summer too. So, oh, wow. Uh, exciting. Oh, our first shot too. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was going to say that earlier when you decided for you, but yes. And I believe it's going to be peaceful too. And something that I've thought about of like, look, I live, I, I live in Orange County, California. I'm among, I could arguably be the, one of the most privileged like people in the world, like living in the United States, living in the, living on the dollar, living in California, living in Southern California. And the fact that like I watched what our government did to our citizens this year and people live in so many other countries all over the world with all different rules and all different, again, what, whether they're bad or good or indifferent and like just politics is such a messy thing in every single country. But the fact that people continue to live their lives inside their homes, regardless of whether bombs are going off outside or, or just like whatever's happening in their thing or not, not even bombs, but it's like cold, just like, things happening and inflation, all this stuff. The fact that, and, and we have seen bad videos, you know, no knock raids and people being brought out of their homes, whether it's for free speech or whether it's for dissent or whether it is whatever. So it definitely happens. It definitely, definitely happens. But I'm impressed. I'm very impressed at the ability for humans to live relatively sovereign lives within their homes. And that is really cool to me. That's really cool to me. And, and when we watch Bitcoin, it has a super power to be able to help those people organize together better from their homes also. And so to your thing of like hyper Bitcoinization, hyper Bitcoinization is happening now. People have their citadels. Like I don't need to, 
I, there's a lot of talk about like, oh, moving from red state to blue state and this stuff, very United States, but like moving from conservative to liberal or like whatever. And I'm like, to me, that still feels like tinkering at the edges. That, that still just kind of feels like it, it all kind of is what it is and you're tinkering at the edges. I'm falling back to the home. Like if you, like, here's the thing. If, if this is a problem, then let's skip all this stuff and send the door knock. Like if, if what I'm saying right now, talking about freedom very, very publicly, I want to talk about very, very practical steps that if you have a problem with the way that authorities are treating humans inside your area, you plugging into Bitcoin will make that 1% better, 2% better, at least, at least. And if that's a problem for me to say that right now, then send the door knock. Skip all the other stuff and send the door knock. In my experience, that hasn't happened. That hasn't happened yet. So I'm going to keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it as many, as many, as many times as I can, because we need more homes. Every single home in the entire world is a Bitcoin Citadel, a sovereign land Bitcoin Citadel, free human. And you plug into the network and you turn up 1%. 2%. Oh man, I could talk to you for hours. We need to, I uh, really love to have you back like on a, as, you know, as we said before the recording on a, uh, for, um, you know, a panel discussion with maybe Zia from Iran or, or, you know, or, or Alessandro Cesera, the El, El Sultan Bitcoin from Venezuela. I think we could really go into all kinds of rabbit holes. Um, yeah. And my bandwidth right now is not even that good. So, uh, Brian, why don't you, uh, yeah, tell my listeners where, where they can find you and we can wrap this up and any final okay. thoughts you have? No, perfect, Kayvon. Thanks for having me. And thanks for talking about freedom and about Bitcoin there. That's my favorite topic. Um, yeah, people go to, enjoy that talk, by the way. <laughs> yeah, go to, go to brianharrington.org and go to um, ocbitcoinnetwork.com. And there you'll find the meetup and there you'll find more about me. And then I'm Brain Harrington on Twitter and my DMs are open and I love to talk. All right, Brian. Thank you so much. And uh, hope to, you know, uh, talk to you soon again. Perfect. See ya. All right. Bye-bye. All right. How'd you like that? Really enjoyed this talk because um, I knew we were going to get along and uh, we have a lot of, you know, things in common and, and you know, whatever vision there is and, and, and ethos and, and, and thoughts of, uh, you know, process of thoughts. So really enjoyed this talk with Brian Harrington. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Uh, check out his website. It's really amazing. He's, you know, he's, he's a project manager, a marketing consultant, film producer, and he's a totally like spiritual Bitcoiner. Uh, so I really love this guy. And yeah, let me know what you think. Follow me on Twitter. Please subscribe to YouTube, YouTube channel and my podcast platforms on anchor.fm slash Kevin Please leave a five-star review if you really love this episode on Apple or podcast, iTunes, wherever. And let me know your, you know, your desires, your wishes, which guests I should bring on next time. Or, you know, hit me up on DM on Twitter or email hello at thetotalconnector.com or kd at kvondavani.com. My name is Kevin Davani, The Total Connector and host moderator of the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. All right, take care and stack set.